There we have uh, a statement of um, the Commission's determination to push ahead with uh, programs that are committed to, to nature restoration, soil health and water resilience. We'll discuss how seriously we think the Commission is taking delivery of those promises in a moment. But before we get to that, our second keynote comes from uh, not a European but a Brazilian perspective. And when it comes to uh, issues concerning uh, restoration and forestation, deforestation, there are arguably no more important countries in the world than Brazil. So it is a great pleasure to invite to the podium uh, Tasso Azevedo, who is the former chief of the Brazilian Forest Service. And rumor has it, Tasso, I don't know if this is true, but maybe you will be part of the Brazilian government again very soon. Uh, that's what I hear. So I don't know if you feel like confirming that, but there is a new government in Brazil. Maybe you'll be part of it. Anyway, I'll shut up and let you take over. <laughs> I'd say I'm, I'm trying to escape <laughs> <laughs> this, but maybe it's not inevitable. Um, okay, thank you for, for, for having me here. Um, uh, in, the, in the last, uh, after being the Chief of Forest Service in Brazil, I've been uh, uh, working for a while to understand land use and land use change um, in Brazil and uh, throughout South America and also in, in Indonesia. Uh, the reason for that, uh, behind that is that 75% um, of the greenhouse gas emissions in Brazil comes from the land use, land use change sector. Um, Brazil is the fifth largest greenhouse gas emitter uh, after China, US, India, and, and Russia. But uh, in those countries, most of the emissions come from burning fossil fuels. In the case of Brazil, we are in this club um, not because of our performance in, on the energy side, which is quite good, uh, but it's because of how we use the land and manage the land. So I will talk about uh, uh, you know, all the numbers and everything I talk here is about this exercise that we've been doing for the last eight years to understand uh, what happens with the land in Brazil on a 30 by 30 meter uh, blocks. So we basically broke down Brazil in 8.9 billion pieces of 30 by 30 meters. And each one of them we follow for the last 35 years, what's going on and how it's been changing. And so we get capture a lot of things on, on this um, by doing this exercise. So Brazil is it, uh, obviously it's a kind of a, a powerhouse of agriculture and, uh, and nature, right? So um, uh, we are the the second we have the second largest area of farming in the planet. Um, one of the top producers of soy, beef, cattle, biofuels, pulp, uh, you name it. You, you think about uh, uh, you know. Uh, farming product and, and Brazil will be there. Uh, and we do this occupying about 33% of the country um, with farming, which is not much different from the average of the world. The, world, the average in the world is 35%. So 33 is uh, kind of, kind of a, the same thing. But there is something different, is that the fact that Brazil still have 66% of the country covered on native uh, vegetation and forests. Not that all of that is preserved. There is a lot of degradation also, but it's a, you know, an, Im an important part of the country that's covered in nature, vegetation, and forest. And, and also we hold the largest biodiversity, uh, the planet, and, and also the large reservoir of fresh water. So if you look at the picture, it looks like a kind of a nice picture, uh, but the problem is the movie. And the movie is worrisome. So in the last three decades, we converted 85 million hectares of natural habitats into farming. Um, 85 million hectares is, is about France and Italy territory together. So it's, it's a large area that has been converted from natural habitats to, to farming. Um, we still have the largest deforestation every year, uh, even in the years that we have deforestation come down. Uh, and for the last 30 years, we have been in this position. You know, like Brazilians like to be the first in things. Uh, that's, that's the one that we are capturing for the last 30 years that is not like very, not very proud. But 70% um, of our farming area is occupied by pasture, cattle, right? Um, uh, one would say that low productivity is, is about one animal per hectare. Um, 
And, but most important is that 63% of this pasture land have signs of moderate or severe degradation in soil, which is a, a fundamental uh, problem of occupation. Um, and we hold the second largest herd of cattle in the planet. The land use change, um, as I said, is responsible for 75% of, uh, of the greenhouse gas emissions in Brazil. Um, and thus contributing a, um, a lot for global warming. The water surface in Brazil is shrinking. So you have like the largest reservoir of fresh water, but the water surface shrinking, critically in Pantanal, which is the largest wetland in the planet, but also, believe me, in the Amazon. Um, we lost 15% of the water surface in the last 30 years. The degradations of soil, and loss of biodiversity, did land use. Uh, it's unfortunately it's, it's happening across the planet. It's not a, something just happening there. But if there is one place in the planet where we can uh, move out of this tragedy fast, um, this place is Brazil. I mean, look, we have top institutions working on tropical agricultural research, um, finding solutions for decades and decades to how to cultivate land. Um, we have a, 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 farm, a farming base in Brazil where it's uh, one of the characteristics is, is to be very fast to adopt um, new technologies. Um, just to, to name two, like fixation, uh, the biological fixation of nitrogen and the no tilling, it's a common practice in Brazil for the last 20 years. Um, over 70% of our agriculture is using those practices in, in terms of area. Um, I mean, uh, the, the, um, uh, for, f the, we have like 45 million hectares of regeneration, which is natural habitats and forests being regenerating in Brazil. This is an area the size of Switzerland. Uh, although in those areas we have the speed of deforestation of those areas is also much faster. It's 10 times faster than primary forests, but they are there. And also we know how to decrease deforestation. During 10 years between 2005 and 2015, deforestation in Brazil declined by 80% at the same time that agriculture and, uh, cattle and, and beef production exploded. But the thing is, in the last five to ten, five, uh, five, seven years, and in particular in the last four years, we have lived like kind of a dark days for the environmental protection in Brazil. And as a result, deforestation accelerated as well as illegal occupation of public lands. Um, deforestation in Brazil, in the vast majority, is a phenomenon uh, of illegality. Uh, we have been verifying every single deforestation event detecting the country in the last four years. And we find out at least one evidence of illegality in over 95% of the cases. On the other hand, deforestation is occurring on a, on a minority part of the properties today. If we take the last four years that we have verified one by one the, the deforestations, less than 2% of the properties in the country had deforestation. So, in other words, 98%, the vast majority of the producers, has, had not used deforestation to grow its production the la at least in the last four years. The deforestation, particularly in, in the Amazon, is already impacting the rain patterns in Brazil. Deforestation and degradation alters and affect the ability of the forest to evaporate water and irrigate the central and southeast of Brazil. And so the dry season is getting longer and the wet season is getting more concentrated. But the winds of change arrive in Brazil with the change in, in office. The new government has included the fight of deforestation, cutting greenhouse gas emissions, and develop the bioeconomy as top priorities alongside with the fight of poverty and increased food production. Although this seems like um, you know, conflicting objectives, they are, I think they are very mutual compatible. We don't need to cut trees to increase production. On the contrary, 
we can double our production basically by applying low carbon emission practices. And this has been proved by Brazilian research institutions such as Embrapa. Protecting the forest and biodiversity increase the resilience and the productivity of agriculture and generate more jobs and income to producers. So the goal now for Brazil is to have zero deforestation by 2030 and to decrease by 50% the greenhouse gas emissions also by 2030. So in light of this uh, moment we are living, the new legislation that uh, you're proving in, in Europe that restricts the entrance of products coming from recently deforested areas are welcome. But the implementation has to be very careful to avoid turning this policy into a barrier to market products from tropical, the tropics in general, because this would be a disincentive for the sustainable management of the land in Brazil, for example. Um, but, but rather, it should be a, an efficient mechanism in avoiding the, that the minority that are, production, that are producing um, with deforestation to not enter Europe. But that is not enough. You know, this policy must be complemented with a kind of a sibling policy that recognizes that the protection of the forests and natural habitats also come with costs. And those protecting that, that forest, from indigenous people all the way to the farmers, all of them should be compensated for the service they are doing for all of us in the planet, not just in Brazil. And this should be also included in the EU agenda. So that's it for now, and looking forward for the debate. Thank you, Castro. Um.